Anyway, in this video we're going to do a, a quick overview of the Nex G1 digital FPV system from R2 Tech. Um, this one's been out for a pretty long time, I think uh, almost a year. And the original versions that were reviewed were prototypes. This is supposedly a updated final version. They've made some changes, addressed some of the issues supposedly. Well, I guess we'll find out. Um, I guess one of the biggest, biggest issues was the video transmitter overheating and dying. I guess we'll find out if that's going to happen on this one. Uh, they've changed the plug here on the, I guess this is the receiver unit here. This is now an XD60 connector. Uh, the way the system works is uh, well, basically you have a camera and this is 10, I think it's uh, 720p video coming back and it records uh, 1080p to your phone. I'll show you that here in a second. You have uh, two of these circular polarized antennas here on the video transmitter unit in the back and that transmits to this receiver unit here. You have these two long antennas and then these two shorter antennas. These two shorter antennas transmit the video to your phone via an app. Uh, I think it's just regular Wi-Fi and that records the actual HD image uh, to a file and the longer ones are the receiving antennas uh, that received from the video transmitter and this is what the unit looks like. It's pretty much a metal case here. There's a bind button here and some lights, it's status lights to show you what's going on. There's some tripod um, mounts here on the side. I think there's one on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's it, just the one on the bottom. So this is, this is designed to go on a tripod and then there's a HDMI out here. They include an HDMI cable. It's supposed to go to either a monitor ground station or your FPV goggles like a Fat Shark or some Sky Zones and this is a mini HDMI here so that's how we're going to see the image here on the screen is via the HDMI the, the receiver receives a signal and sends it out via HDMI and uh, that we'll go ahead and plug this in and power everything up this is uh, kind of a bulky system it's pretty heavy it's like four, over 40 almost 50 grams for the this uh, I guess they're called the air unit with the camera VTX and the antennas so yeah, you're going to need a bigger craft, probably at least a 5 inch to fly it on, or a pretty powerful 3 inch. Now the receiver unit, it runs off of 3 to 4S, and I believe the uh, VTX unit here runs off of uh, 2 to 4S. So I'm going to be using a, I think this is a 3S, this is a 4S LiPo here with an XD30. I actually added this XD30 onto the uh, VTX unit here, you can see right here. There's some solder pads here. There's also a plug they can use um, that's included, but uh, it's that's pretty tiny. I'm not going to use that. Okay, so I plugged everything in. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for the system to boot up, as you can see here. It's been plugged in for about 10 seconds already. Uh, yeah, there's a self check and everything here, so you have to kind of wait through all this before it's actually ready to go. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, to boot up. We'll go ahead and see if the Wi-Fi is working. And it is, so we can connect to the hotspot there, XG1, and the password. Password is 1234568. Kind of a strange password, it's in the manual. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is connected now. Uh, you want to make sure you download this app. It's also in the manual link to that. It's called NextG1. And go ahead and allow all the permissions. And this should give us our image. And this is also on the monitor here as well. And if you don't have the monitor connected, the um, app won't work for some reason. I think that's a fail safe or something like that. So I think you tap this screen here, and then this will bring up these controls, and then you tap this button, and they'll hit up, they'll make a photo. And then I think if you hit this button here, that'll switch it to video mode. And we'll start displaying everything on the screen. That's okay. Hit start. And this should now start recording what's coming through on the there is a little bit of stutter there. I'm not exactly sure why we're like right next to everything here. Could be they were too close possibly. And also this uh, cable here, 
that is connecting the video transmitter to the camera is kind of, it seems a little frail to me. And using kind of, instead of silicone wires, using this cheap plastic wire, which is not really going to be, I think it's going to be questionable if it's going to be durable long term. But this is the image, and I am going to actually overlay this on the screen so you can see what that looks like um, in full screen mode. There's some telemetry, some information down here. You got your voltage, the uh, channel you're on. Um, not exactly 100% sure what all this is. I think that's power on time here. HQ probably means high quality. It's probably a low quality mode if you're further away. The range on this isn't super far. It's like a thousand meters or something like that. So this isn't really meant for long range. I think it's more meant for closer flights perhaps. Um, where maybe you're in confined spaces where you need more detail in your FPV feed. Um, something like that. Also, you know, the fact that, that this can connect to your standard goggles um, is probably a little bit different, obviously, from the DJI system. Uh, you don't need to get your own separate goggles for that. I think those goggles are like $550 or something like that. So you can just use your current goggles and just use and get the HD image on that through an HDMI connection from the receiver. So that's pretty much it uh, for the overview of this of the, I guess, the, the system here. I'm going to have, obviously, another video later. I'm going to kind of have to figure out what to put this in. I'm not exactly sure. It does seem like it does have a 30 by 30 mounting pattern here, so I might be able to put it on top of a flight stack. I'm not 100% sure, because I'm going to have to figure that out. Obviously, this is going to have to go something pretty bigger, like a 5-inch. So, stay tuned for that video coming up soon. But this is just a quick overview on the system. It does seem like it works pretty good. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.